In the local Ford Everest lineup, we have several Everest 4x2 trims, which is the base spec trend, the limited trim, which I do believe might be discontinued already because it's no longer found in Ford Philippines website. And then we have this Everest Sport right here. And then on top of this, we have the, the titanium 4x2 trim. Now, over that titanium 4x2, we also have the top of the top, the top spec Everest in the country, which is the Everest Titanium Plus 4x4. Now, in this video, we will find out if this Ford Everest Sport can make a strong case for itself when you compare it against the base spec trend and the higher trim titanium 4x2. Let's do this. When I first featured the next-gen Ford Everest Sport, I declared that it may very well be the best 4x2 variant in the local Everest lineup. See, at 2,109,000 Philippine pesos, it is 100 grand less than the higher titanium 4x2 trim, but the Sport does not lose out on key performance and tech features. But still, the proof is in the driving, and so I borrowed the Ford Everest Sport for one week just to see if it can live up to my statement. So, how did it do? Well, time to find out. Here at Reagan's Rides, we do car reviews of SUVs, sports cars, trucks, and everything in between. So subscribe and hit the bell. Right off the bat, I can immediately tell you that the Everest Sport performs just as well as the higher trim Everest Titanium 4x2. So yeah, there you go, video finish. <laughs> no need to continue this, right? <laughs> I mean, just kidding, pare. Just kidding, just kidding. You see, if you look at it, the 100,000 Philippine Peso price difference between this Everest Sport and the top, top uh, no, higher trim Titanium 4x2 is a tiny amount. I mean, especially if you're looking at this price level, which is uh, over 2 million Philippine pesos already. I mean, 100,000 Philippine pesos, what's that? Like 5%? So just 5%. So you can approach this in two ways. Either you can say that, what's another 100,000 pesos, pare? What's another 100 grand? Let's, let's just go up to the higher trim Everest Titanium 4x2. Or you can say, why would I even spend 100,000 pesos more for what is essentially the same car, right? I mean, essentially, this is the same car as the Everest Titanium 4x2. Heck, we can even go as far as saying that mechanically, this is the same car as the base trim Everest Trend model. You see, we have the same 2-liter single turbo diesel here as the Trend and the Titanium 4x2 which can put out 170 PS and 405 Newton meters of torque. We also have the same six-speed automatic transmission here, which is, as I said, shared with the lower and the higher 4x2 variants. Now, that means that the drive performance of this Everest Sport is practically identical to the other 4x2 Everest trims. The turbo diesel that we have here, even at 170 PS, is nice and responsive, and it's also one of the more refined turbo diesels in the category today. Now, the steering feel is, it's the lightest in the PPV category, uh, and it still feels very much like a Ford Everest to drive. I mean, that just means that it's, it's light, it feels light, it's comfortable, uh, despite having one of the largest and most imposing body frames uh, in the segment as well. Heck, the fuel efficiency is also the same as the other Everest 4x2 trims out there, giving me 10 kilometers per liter around the city during light city drives and reaching as much as 16 kilometers per liter on the highway. Now, despite having four lesser gears than, let's say, the top spec Everest Titanium 4x4, uh, the six speed automatic transmission also does a fairly decent job in balancing power delivery and fuel economy. So, if the mechanical performance of this Everest Sport is identical to the, you know, the other Everest 4x2 trims, then what the heck sets this Everest Sport apart from its other 4x2 siblings? 
Well, for starters, you get this exclusive lightning blue paint job right here. You see, this color can only be specced in this, in this Everest Sport trim, and I have to say, it is a pretty catchy color. Now, we also lose the chrome bits here on the outside in favor of black, such as this blacked out front grille here, as well as the blacked out lettering found on the hood of this Everest Sport. Now, this lettering is again exclusive only to the Sport trim. Now, we also have uh, full LED lighting units here from the DRLs, headlights, and fog lights. And if you look at the entire local Everest lineup, you'll see that these LED lighting units is already standard even when you go for the base spec Everest trend model. Now, the side profile gets some more blacked out bits and pieces here, such as the roof rails, the blacked out power folding side mirrors with the LED turn signals. We have blacked out uh, door handles here, the side front fender garnish as well as the 20 inch alloy wheels which are also well blacked out now i must say that these blacked out pieces really go so well with this lightning blue paint job such that if you are thinking of getting an everest sport well i would highly recommend that you get it in this lightning blue paint because it really looks darn good now as for the mechanical bits well they are the same as the other everest um, trims in the lineup. We have four-wheel ventilated disc brakes here and for the suspension, it rides on double wishbones up front and a watts link, well, a coil spring and watts link setup for the rear. Now, because the mechanical bits are the same, well, the ground clearance is also the same at 227 millimeters and the wading depth stands at 800 millimeters, which is the highest in the category. Now inside the cabin, you will see the biggest difference of this Everest Sport versus the pricier Titanium 4x2 trim and all you need to do is look up. See, when you look up, you will see that the Everest Sport does not come with a panoramic sunroof but the Titanium trim gets that. Now, some people would consider that to be a deal breaker. So if you're one of those people, well, dude, uh, just make yourself happy. Pony up the extra 100,000 Philippine Pesos and get the Titanium 4x2 trim instead. Now, we also lose the ambient lighting here. That's not really a big deal for me. And we have a smaller touchscreen infotainment system here at 10 inches. Not that 10 inches is small by any means, but yeah, when you compare it to a to the 12 inch touchscreen infotainment system of the titanium 4x2 trim then yes this is a bit of a step down functionality wise though this 10 inch touchscreen is still the same as the 12 inch touchscreen in the higher trims because we still get wireless apple carplay wireless android auto and we still get a reverse camera image here now i would have opted for a you know i would have hoped for a 360 degree view camera image in this sport trim uh, but then, yeah, that is reserved only for the top of the top, the top spec Everest Titanium 4x4. Now, we also have uh, a wireless charge pad here, at least uh, that's a standard even for the base spec trend model. And we also have a pair of cup holders here beside the shifter, which is the perfect place to store your locally juiced drinks. Hmm, locally. These are really in cool colors. I mean, what are the flavors? We have, um, yeah, we have locally tamarind and locally calamansi. Hmm, maasim, sour. Para dun sa mga may asim pa, di ba? <laughs> anyway, uh, what else? Well, the rest of the cabin is pretty much standard Everest fare, which means that we get uh, power leather seats here up front. We still have a bunch of soft touch materials here inside the cabin. And yes, we have a very ergonomic um, cabin here, which is always a treat to spend a lot of time in. And that's what I like about the Ford Everest, the next gen Ford Everest, regardless of the trim level. You see, Ford engineered the cabin with comfort and space in mind, which explains why this next-gen Ford Everest is truly popular here in the Philippines. You see, they didn't really scrimp on the overall driving experience of this mid-size SUV, giving this uh, mid-trim Everest Sport 
all of the necessary tech and safety features that you can ever ask for for its price level. Now, speaking of safety, now, while we don't get the advanced driver assist systems that can be found in the top spec titanium 4x4 trim, well, the passive safety features, as you're seeing on your screen, uh, of this sport trim is still really one of the better ones in the segment. Now, as for the comfort of the second row seats, let's go and check it out. All right, so if you will sit in the second row seats of the Everest Sport most of the time, if you're like, like a, you know, a passenger prince here at the back or a backseat boss, then you will feel and see the difference that a panoramic sunroof makes. You see, without the panoramic sunroof, yeah, the, the second row seats feel a little bit smaller. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still spacious enough to fit three average Asian dudes like myself, uh, but we don't get that feeling of airiness and ambiance that I got to experience with the top spec Ford Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 when I reviewed it last year. Now that bump in the center, uh, in the ceiling, that center bump also doesn't help its cost but we need that for the AC vents for the third row passengers. Now thankfully, the ride quality of the Everest Sport is just as comfortable as the top spec Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 um, which is something that I've already come to expect from the next gen Ford Everest. I mean, I am going to say it in this video right now guys, the next gen Ford Everest has the best ride quality amongst all of the 7-seater mid-size pickup based SUVs in the category today. Now, despite being a mid-trim, the Everest Sport still gets a power liftgate that comes with a kick function. See? Now, that is a feature that it shares with the higher trim Titanium 4x2, which is pretty nifty. Now, as for the cargo space, well, it is the same as the other Everest in the lineup, naturally. Now, I don't have the the actual figures and liters, but I can confidently tell you that I can take my medium Sky Travel luggage here, I can put it inside with the third row seats folded, and we can fit around four to five, possibly a sixth medium Sky Travel luggage here at the cargo area. Now, as for the third row seats, well, the third row seats are are decent enough for a five foot six dude like myself if we are going on a short trip but it's still not the most comfortable place to sit in inside the Ford Everest. But then again, if you think about it, well, that practically applies to all of the seven-seater mid-size pickup-based SUVs in its segment today. So, did the Everest Sport live up to my expectations as the best 4x2 Everest in the country? Well, in a nutshell, yes, it did. Since I drive most of the time, I don't really care much for the panoramic sunroof. It's not a deal breaker, at least for me. I also love the exclusive blue and black color combo of the sport trim since it is eye-catching without being too tacky. Now at the end of the day, the Everest Sport delivered everything I need and nothing I don't. The feature set is also in perfect balance with the asking price, making the Ford Everest Sport my top pick amongst the 4x2 trims of the local Ford Everest lineup. Thanks for watching.